Well, you mentioned something earlier about the combination of perhaps even uh, probiotics with bacteriophage uh, or a combination of antibiotics with bacteriophage. Can you explain to people what bacteriophages are? Absolutely. So, so bacteriophages are intriguing viruses um, that in contrast to the viruses that we all uh, you know, suffer from these days are viruses that do not infect humans and they do not infect any um, mammals or any eukaryotic cells. These are viruses that only infect bacteria and only attack bacteria. And um, these uh, viruses are exceedingly uh, common in nature. You can find many, many uh, uh, types uh, of these uh, viruses um, in our environment. And in fact, these viruses are the big enemies of the bacteria that surround us. So there's kind of an arms race between bacteria and these bacteriophages, which attack bacteria, with the phages trying to kill bacteria and the bacteria developing uh, a means of defending themselves against these viruses. Uh, it's an intriguing arms race, which led to some groundbreaking discoveries, such as CRISPR, uh, which is the, you know, one of these uh, uh, defense mechanisms, which has been now massively exploited by uh, science in order to um, genome edit, uh, for example, uh, uh, genes of interest. Um, so so this, is, this is what occurs in nature. What we and others um, are thinking uh, about uh, in, in utilizing phages is that, um, you know, we have a huge unmet need in the microbiome field. Imagine that you find a member, a, a, a microbe, a bacteria in the microbiome, which um, contributes to disease, contributes to IBD, contributes to cancer. What do you do? How do you get rid of these bacteria without harming the entire microbial surrounding uh, um, that is so important for our health. Um, antibiotics are a very limited manner of doing this. Uh, antibiotics are nonspecific. They have big adverse effects. They result in the emergence of resistant strains. So, so you cannot use antibiotics forever for, for your entire life. And, and many of the disease-causing bacteria in the microbiome are antibiotic resistant. So what do you do? We have a, really an unmet need uh, um, in having no means of, of taking out a microbe from the microbiome when we want to um, eliminate its bad effects. And so we thought that phages could represent an attractive means of attacking a bacteria without impacting the entire microbiome because phages are very specific in their targets. A, a given phage would only attack a certain family of bacteria that has uh, a receptors which the phage recognizes. Um, now, I told you before that bacteria in, as part of this arms race have developed very strong defense mechanisms against phages. So if you give just one phage, it is very likely that the bacteria it would attack would generate defense mechanisms that would make it resistance against, resistant against this uh, phage and, and so your therapy would not be successful. So what we are doing, we are generating cocktails of phages that are targeting the same bacteria through different receptors or different mechanisms. And together, these phages are killing the bacteria without an, allowing it to develop these antiphage defense system. Uh, um, and, and if this is successful, and we're now in the midst of clinical trials, we would be able to really take a, a needle out of the haystack by targeting a single bacteria or a single type of bacteria without killing the entire microbiome and causing uh, a substantial collateral damage. I didn't. I wasn't aware that uh, the the bacteria in, were developing these defense mechanisms. Kind of, you can think about it, you know, uh, the, as similar to like antibiotic resistance in a way, I guess. Um, but what are your what are your thoughts about then perhaps a future where we have this targeted type of treatment, where in in addition to maybe your bacteriophage cocktail that's targeting maybe you know one or perhaps two of the pathogenic type of bacteria and then combining them with a commensal type of bacteria um in in terms of you know allowing this pre precision probiotics in a way uh, perhaps i don't know maybe there's another name for it but where you're actually allowing the uh, the types of bacteria that we know are commensal that maybe perhaps these people are not are lacking and um it, this is a way to actually get them to be colonized Absolutely, and, and I'm, I'm, I, I totally agree with, with what you suggest. And, and I think uh, 
you know, at, at the very young microbiome field, we're at the stage of understanding more and more of these interactions and, and the roles of different bugs and their communication systems, and also are increasingly busy in generating these new uh, treatment options that hopefully would be put on the clinical shelf in years to come. But I am totally uh, with you uh, with the prospect that these new interventions would be combined with each other in contributing to what we call uh, personalized or precision medicine. In other words, I, I, I would speculate that exactly as you suggest, um, a phage cocktail that would eradicate a, a family of bacteria with, from the microbiome uh, would be successfully combined with um, a probiotic or maybe a, a precision or next generation probiotic, which would have the ability to colonize in a given person and would replace the niche uh, I'm now freed from, from this disease uh, uh, um, contributing a microbe. So, so a combination between probiotics and phages, between dietary interventions that would uh, enable better probiotic uh, um, activity and so on and so forth are what I anticipate uh, for our future. What do you think the potential timeline would be on, on this, you know, ultimately replacing some of our current um, ways of like antibi antibiotic treatment, for example, which is a very blunt sort of, you know, uses a very blunt mechanism. Like, as you mentioned, it wipes out everything, good and bad bacteria. Yeah, I mean, when we criticize antibiotics, we need to be very careful. Uh, uh, you know, antibiotic uh, uh, interventions have, have amazingly transformed human lives, human health, human medicine. You know, they, they increased, I think, close to 30 years uh, of, of lifespan within a century and, and, and at least partially took care of, of what is considered to be our number one, two, and three uh, cause of mortality uh, for millions of years. Uh, however, as, as we discussed previously, uh, antibiotics are, are also associated with many prices that we pay, and we're just beginning to appreciate what they do to our microbiome. Um, I, I don't think that um, the current uh, uh, medical interventions would be replaced, but I'm very hopeful that we would be able to implement them with uh, new precision data-driven approaches that would enable to increase the efficacy uh, uh, of these treatments and to be combined with them. As to the timelines, you know, with, with, you know th there is quite a hyper or overhype with, with the very young microbiome field. And, and partially it's justifiable because, you know, in a, in a matter of a decade and a half, we've discovered that uh, our human body, uh, in addition to the 20 something thousand genes that uh, are encoded in our human cells also contain 3 million and more bacterial genes uh, um, that we didn't appreciate and we didn't know anything about. Uh, um, so, so this is for sure, at least in my view, a, a revolution, but we're only, at the beginning of, of understanding this, this new world. Um, remember that, you know, it took decades for, for cardiology to get to a point where, um, you know, catheterization and, and all the fancy interventions that are saving lives today have been uh, matured and, and developed uh, for clinical use. We're only talking about a very infant field, uh, lots of research, lots of advances, but also lots of, of, of challenges. And I, I don't want to give a, a time estimate, but I'm hopeful that within the next decade, we will start to see some interventions maturing in a data-driven way uh, into the clinical shelf. That would be great. What, what role do you think, or what role does the so-called virome play in, in human health? And do you think that science may yet find that viruses modulate health in, a poss like in unexpected ways? Uh, absolutely, and and I think uh, one of the only uh, the, the only reason we're we're so much into bacteria in the in the microbiome, especially in the gut microbiome, is is because the, we, we have the tools and we're we're a little bit lazy and and kind of searching under the lamp and and going where it's comfortable. Uh, but the more we 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 probe into the virome and the fungum and the parasitome, we find that there are whole kingdoms within our microbiome which are understudied and underappreciated. Uh, but nonetheless, I think that they have potential huge impacts on how the human body behaves in health and on the risk of developing disease and even on other kingdoms within the microbiome. So, so this huge amount of, of, of exciting research to, to be conducted uh, in decoding these, these uh, roles of these other kingdoms and, uh, you know, the, the, the future will tell us. <laughs> 